All right, welcome everybody. Good evening. Uh, my name is Scott Walters. I'm the principal here at Lebanon High School, and uh, you all are incoming, or what we call rising freshmen for next year. Uh, it's one of our favorite events. We do lots of things for incoming freshmen throughout uh, the spring and summer. We'll talk about some of those in a few minutes. A lot is changing uh, for you. You are all coming from, can we just keep it on the, the title page for a minute? Uh, coming from way different schools to this gigantic one over here across town. Um, it makes our school a little unique. We try to work a little bit harder then to make everybody feel uh, welcome and uh, comfortable. Hopefully we answer a lot of your questions tonight. Uh, you have in deciding kind of the route you want to take as a high school student. That's our goal tonight is to make you feel real comfortable, a little more at ease. I know that we're coming from um, four, possibly five different middle schools, all in one big building, uh, much smaller middle schools. And so there's a little nervousness, a little, little uh, anxiety about what that's going to be like. So it's our goal uh, to uh, make you feel as welcome and comfortable as possible. We will also be here when this is over. This will not be the entire night you sitting here listening to me talk. Uh, but uh, So we will be up here at the front to answer questions for you. As you've already seen, we have lots of things set up uh, in the comments uh, for you to see as far as what we've got going on here at the high school. Uh, so let me introduce to you first some key people that you are going to interact with a lot while you're students here and even quite possibly before you become a student here. So uh, you should have already heard from a high school counselor at your middle school about registering for classes for next year. The high school schedule is very uh, complex. Uh, we have 1,800 students, and every one of them has a different schedule, and it takes us a very long time to put that together. So we have already started asking students what they're going to take next year, uh, all of our rising 9th through 12th graders. Uh, so some of these people that are very key to helping you understand how to do that are your school counselors. Uh, we have five of them. Mr. Denton is up in the booth running the PowerPoint. I will let these other ladies introduce themselves. I am Gloria Martinez. I'm Sarah Frazier, and I have last names M I through S C. I'm Tatum Tyler, and I have the alphabet S E through Z. Uh, my part of the alphabet is H I through M E. And we'll have all that up there for you to capture before you leave too. We also have one more, Miss Alms, Courtney Alms. She's actually at another meeting over at um, Cumberland uh, for our early college students and planning that for our juniors and seniors next year. Uh, our head football coach is out in the commons at the football booth, uh, but he is also our graduation coach. He works with uh, students who are at risk of not graduating on time. Of course, your goal and ours is that you graduate on time. Sometimes we got to intervene a little bit to make sure that happens. Uh, our registrar, her name is Lisa Smith. Every one of you will communicate with her at some point over the summer. She makes sure that you are fully registered as a student in this district and this school and asks you for paperwork and stuff like that. And she is the best in the district and knows all the answers. So we're lucky to have her. And then um, we've got four assistant principals. Some of them are here. So Ms. Hallams is back there want to meet Ms. Helms, most of you probably know Ms. Helms, she probably taught you, uh, so she's, she's a LHS staple. Um, what we do is we, if you, you've heard these counselors up here talk about which students they work with. So they work with all grades, 9th through 12th grade. They work with different parts of the alphabet. So depending on what your last name is, a counselor and a principal pair to work with that group of students. So those are two consistent, trusted faces that will work with your child in the four years that they're here. Uh, we try to develop really good relationships in that way, make ourselves feel a little bit smaller in that way, and give you some go-to people uh, that, that you can rely on. All right, Mr. Denton. 
All right, we're going to show you a few things in typical classes, what to expect uh, when you see a schedule, a little bit about the registration process, um, some changes, expectations when you get to ninth grade, and some upcoming events. Uh, we'll keep it all up here for you to take pictures of. I know lots of people want a snapshot of uh, some information we show. We will also post this to our website, so anybody you know that could not come tonight will be able to flip through this whenever they can. Uh, as you can see, back in December, uh, we visited these middle schools. I believe um, one of them, where's Ms. Goad? She's at, where's Ms. Goad, the counselor? Walter J. I think she did it all on her own. She's, she's smart. She's done this for a long time. So you may not have seen a counselor on that day, uh, but Ms. Goad gave you all the information already. All right, so here's... Maybe some quick info. We'll get a little more in the weeds as we go along. Am I making that noise for you? All right. Uh, English. You gotta have English every year. You just call it English one, two, three, four. Algebra one. Maybe geometry. Some of you are taking algebra one this year. That means you're going to take geometry next year. Uh, world history, biology, lifetime wellness, which is a good old health class. You took health in high school. We call that lifetime wellness now. And uh, if you take, if you participate in the JROTC program, that will fulfill that credit. You gotta have a fine art. That does not mean it has to be art. A lot of options when it comes to fine arts at the high school. And then you get two classes of your choosing. We have per when counselors visited middle schools, they gave them a course catalog, maybe a link to a course catalog with the hundreds of classes that we offer here that they can take beyond the normal math, science, social studies, English classes. Here are some things you're gonna hear a lot as high school students and high school parents. We talk about credits a lot. There are a certain number of credits that you must earn in order to graduate. There are very specific credits that you must earn in order to graduate. So not only do you have to have, say, 26 credits over your four years, four of those have to be English. You have to pass four years of English class. Okay, so counselors talk about in credits a lot. Uh, that's kind of credit is a class, sort of. Uh, your GPA is a number that you graduate with that's on your final transcript that you take with you when you graduate from high school and it stays with you for the rest of your life. Your employer may ask you for it. Your, if you plan to go to college, they will absolutely ask you for it. Uh, it is a the grades you earn, A, B, C, D, F, are worth a certain amount of points. Your GPA is the average of those grades. So if you only ever make A's, and an A is worth four points, and you graduate with an average of a 4.0, which is good. So uh, that's something that counselors will also talk to you a lot about. Uh, blocks, so we have classes here, they're called blocks. We have four blocks. Kids have four classes. First block, second block, third block, fourth block. We don't call them periods, we don't call them hours, they're all blocks. Uh, we want to emphasize that what you submit when you register are requests. Requests can and hopefully will be fulfilled, but it is not a guarantee. Uh, there are electives, so those are those choices you get to make from the course catalog. And then there's alternates. Which are the choices like your second choice, your third choice. If I can't get into this class, I would like to take this class. Uh, and then by the time you graduate, you should have an elective focus, which means that you have taken a certain number of classes in a specific area. Uh, and, and, and that's a lot of detail I'm not going to get into, but those are terms you're going to hear a lot when you speak to your child or when your child speaks to the counselor. Uh, those are all requirements over your next four years as a high school student. This is what schedules look like. It's a typical high school freshman schedule. That's actually two schedules. So if you just look at the first half, top, that second column says S1, S1, S1. That's semester one. Students have these four classes. So general music is going to be their fine arts credit. They've got world history, ag science, and algebra one. Notice they don't have English in the fall because our students only take four classes at a time. Each of those four classes was worth four credits. 
So if they pass all of their classes in a school year, they have eight credits. In the spring, so when they come back in January after Christmas break, they're going to have a whole new schedule. Four different classes. That's when they're going to have their lifetime wellness, their English class, their in a long, year-long algebra class, which a lot of our students do, and biology. So we get, like, we don't have to talk about this now, but when we come back in July for this meeting, when you give you your schedule, we've got a lot of people who freak out or panic because we think we've only given them half the classes they need. It's because you just get your fall classes in July. And you get your spring classes when you get close to Christmas. All right. Okay, so registration has already begun. I hope some of you have completed it or at least started it. And if not, you can go back to your school tomorrow. You tell your teachers and your counselors that you should have already started registration for classes next year. Uh, you have to have access to Wilson County Schools Skyline. If you are a Carroll Oakland, a Southside, a Tucker's Crossroads student, you already have a username and password. The thing you've been using to get into Skyward all these years still works as a Lebanon High School student. If you are an LSSD student, you have a username and password for Skyward. Your counselor has that for you. Hopefully you have it already. If not, that's what you can all do tomorrow, is bug your teachers and counselors about getting that to you. Um, it is different. So if you try to log into Skyward using your LSSD username and password, it will get you in, but you will not be able to see anything for Lebanon High School because Lebanon High School is a Wilson County school. Um, sometimes people log in, but they have selected the wrong school district. We are Wilson County, not Williamson County. Or they don't realize that they're still in their LSSD um, stuff. Um, and registration remains open until February 18th. They're all uh, rising freshmen should have their course requests in Skyward by February 18th. After February 18th, you will not be able to put anything into Skyward. And counselors will have to make choices for you. And nobody wants that. They don't want that. And I know you don't either. All right. What classes should I sign up for? Unfortunately, we do not know you. We uh, have not learned your names. We don't know what kind of student you are. We don't know what you're interested in. Uh, and so you need to talk to your current teachers and counselors about that. We are going to share our contact information parents are welcome to reach out to us and ask for um, our guidance or advice, um, but, but we'll just tell you, you're going to have to tell us about your child because we don't know much yet. Um, we use a lot of data, like I said before. What you submit is a request. We choose your classes. So you may request to take Honors Geometry or Honors Algebra 1. Not have the data to support that as a, an appropriate placement, and you may not be in that honors class. You also may tell us that you need to take some standard classes, and we look at your data and we know you need to be in honors classes. And so we will make those changes and we will discuss them with you when they need to happen. Uh, but some of that uh, is what we go through when we try to, to put students in the right. Maybe it's an intervention class, need some help with reading, some foundational math skills. We have those here. Uh, but those are things that we pay attention to and look at before making schedule changes and before getting our schedule completely ready uh, for August. So there are a lot of questions about registration. We do not have to all race out to sign in and uh, get your classes requested first. They all kind of go into the same pool. Um, at the, after February 18th. No one's at an advantage if you've already done your course requests. So it is a myth, kind of like a college myth. You get in there first and you get your spot, and then when the class is full, you're out. So that's not how it works here. Um, we cannot offer all the classes, all the time, every block. It is impossible. Sometimes we have a class, and there's only one section of that class, and it meets during second block only, but you're in the band, and your band class meets second block. And so we call you in, so you have to make a choice. So it is, like I said, a very complicated schedule. B, I counted the other day, beyond all of the English, the math, science, and social studies, we have 
over, it's like 105 elective classes on the schedule. And we have 1,800 students who have requested eight requests a piece. And we've got to get everybody into as many places as they want as best we can. And so that is why it's just kind of complicated. I wish we could give everybody everything that they want. It's just not always possible. So if you see at the bottom, you want to know how complicated it is out of all the students here, there are no two students that have the same schedule. So that is something that's a little different when you come from middle school, when everybody kind of walks out of one room and they go down the same hall to another room or to the cafeteria together to eat lunch. I mean, that, that just doesn't and cannot happen here. And the bell rings, everybody's got six seconds, and all 1,800 are going to a different place. Not six seconds, six minutes. I wish we could do it in six seconds. That's how good we are here, y'all. We'll train you. So six minutes goes fast. You gotta get, this is a really big building. Um, and so you've got six minutes to get somewhere and the other 1,799 kids are going somewhere else. And so we really help our freshmen like learn to navigate that and to be responsible for themselves and getting themselves from one place to another on time. That is a new skill that we have to work on quite a bit. All right, Mr. Dick. Uh, some big differences, uh, a little bit more freedom than maybe what you've experienced in um, middle school. I know, I don't think that this happens anymore, but I used to kind of make fun of one of the middle, I don't know what, make fun of the middle schools that we don't have blue lines down the hall where we all walk on the blue line or touch the wall or whatever and go from place to place. So uh, we trust you, but well, we learn to trust you. You build trust uh, to get yourself where you're supposed to be. And sometimes it takes our intervention to teach you how to make that happen. Uh, but it is something um, that you have to learn as far as responsibility goes. That's academic responsibility, behavior, uh, time management, things like that. Uh, you do get to choose classes. And as you get older, the, the higher the grade you are in, the more choices you have, especially as you really figure out what it is you enjoy doing, what you want to do when you graduate from high school. Uh, there's so much that we offer here that will help prepare you for that, uh, that it's exciting to get to make those choices every year. They do become more challenging. One thing I say, though, on the block schedule, you only got four classes to manage at a time. That is completely doable. Especially, if we go back and look, we're to look at that sample schedule, you may be in PE and choir and English and biology, just four random classes. That's really only two classes you're probably going to have homework in. Just two. The other two, give it all you got while you're in there, probably not having to take a whole lot home. So the block schedule really does lend itself for you to be able to, res to be responsible for everything that's being asked of you when you're in the classroom. Uh, they, every class counts in ninth grade, and it usually takes, I'm not going to say usually, it sometimes takes students to about their junior year to figure out that the grades you make, they're not going anywhere. Sometimes about the third time you're taking Algebra 1, you have figured out that you have to pass Algebra 1. So that is a little different. And in middle school or elementary school where you may not have done so well, but you get to go to the next grade. And you get to, because you're not earning credits. There's no transcript that follows you from middle school to high school. But you are required to pass every required course in this building before you can graduate and get a diploma. That is very different. The GPA starts getting built based on your very first semester's grades as a freshman. So we also do a lot of that. We'll pull freshmen in, we'll have little seminars on what GPA is, what grades mean. We have students talk about things that they wish they had done differently as young students and things like that. We think it really helps in uh, kind of easing them into to high school. All right, Mr. Dick. Do your homework, get involved, be organized, sleep, come every day. One of those I'm gonna highlight more than anything else is about what's in the comments. That's getting uh, involved in something outside of the classroom. We do a lot of like uh, graduate interviews with our seniors who are about to graduate. Sometimes we record them, make great videos of them, 
I'll have one tonight. But um, one of the questions we ask our seniors before they graduate is, what is one thing you regret about high school or one thing you wish you had done differently? And many of them will say, I wish I had gotten more involved at school. I wish I had played a sport. I wish I was in more clubs. There is a lot of fun to be had here, and it's probably not happening in your chemistry class. As much as chemistry is very valuable to your future, kids here are having fun, and they get involved in those competitive things. When they have something to do outside of school, they make their friends, they get close to their teachers and their coaches. It is a lot of times because of those extracurricular activities that they get involved in. We know that a 17-year-old is not coming in the building every day because they are excited about their Algebra 2 test. But they are happy to be here because they love to do the carpentry stuff. They can't wait for football practice after school. They want to get in the culinary lab and learn how to cook international cuisine. All those things are happening in the building. So what we do is we do all those things and make them really high quality stuff to get our kids here. And then while we got them here, we have captivated their attention and make them take algebra two. We make them pass chemistry. We make them get those things that they have to do before they get to do what they want to do when they graduate. Uh, here's a little information about athletics. Uh, you have a little diagram of the, the groups that are out in the commons. That is not every sport that we have. Those are the coaches who made the availability to be here tonight. So uh, if you don't see a team out in the, in the commons, do not worry about it. Don't, don't panic. Um, you just have the opportunity to talk to the coaches who are here. So these are all the sports here. They're also listed on one of the handouts you got at the door. Uh, we are not, by TWSAA rules, allowed to have middle schoolers on our campus playing sports as a recruiting violation. And so we can't have tryouts until your, after your last day of school as an eighth grader. So you are not going to miss any information about tryouts tonight because we don't have that yet. What we do is we will have um, the full list of sports and their tryout dates released to the middle schools, posted online. We send it out a hundred ways. Uh, and they will, most likely all those dates will occur in the summer. Some sports wait to do it in the fall after school has started, but a lot of them are gonna happen right after school is out. But you're not gonna miss that. We're gonna make sure that you have it. Um, and so you can continue to check that website. It is a little, Go Blue Devils Athletics.com. So you've got to put the S after the Devils. Um, and so just continue to check that. Uh, it will be hard for you to miss as many ways as we send that out. We don't want any of you missing that. So we're, we're pretty sure to get it out there. What can you do as a parent? Please talk to your children about classes that they would like to take. That's appropriate for them. You know them better than anybody. Push them a little bit. We want them to challenge themselves. Sit down together, look at the course catalog. You'll probably have to let them get, pull it up on their Chromebook for you to look at it. Um, they don't know how to fill out forms usually, and so you got to help them with that too. Starting in July, you'll start getting um, actual phone calls from Lebanon High School, Wilson County Schools. Your contact information will be in our system, and we will start telling you that the uh, registration process has opened up in Skyward, and you need to complete that. When I say registration, I just mean registering your child for school. That has nothing to do with classes. That is something you've probably done every year as a parent, where we ask you for two proofs of residency, make sure that you live in our school zone, you fill out 12 different documents. Um, that's just something you do every year for each child who's attending any school district. You'll get that as a Lebanon High School parent July. There are also different ways to kind of be in the know and keep up with us. So uh, there's a lot of social media out there. Uh, we do a lot through Twitter. Uh, so those are different handles. The first one being of most value. Uh, but then also, if you want to uh, get remind texts from the school, you can go ahead and, and sign up for that. If you don't want LHS information right now, take a picture, sign up for it later, when we're closer to the end of the year. Uh, but that is where we may send out, hey, do not forget that registration ends February 18th, 
or uh, a lot of times we're sending out deadlines, scholarship information, things that have to do with different grade levels uh, for parents. Um, so it's the same way that your teachers use it. Oh yeah, upcoming events. Okay, so don't forget February 18th. We have not scheduled this yet, but in years past, we have had our 8th graders all come into the building one day in the spring, and we bring them all together, just them, and uh, LSSD buses them over, Carol Oakland comes, we all sit in here, we have a meeting, we give a big detailed tour of the building, uh, it's a good day, they're kind of all in the room at the same time as Blue Devils together, uh, so that's exciting, we let the our current uh, students who are about to graduate talk to them as well. Uh, it's a quick hour, in and out, but it's a really good experience for them, for them to get familiar with the building. We also, uh, we have done it that way. We have also had like a little summer orientation um, that's kind of spread out over several days. Uh, so we will do one of those two things, either a day in the spring or a few days in the summer. You will get plenty of notice about when that's happening and how it's going to happen. Um, and then we will have a big 8th grade orientation in July, which will be the week, well, I guess that we should call it ninth grade orientation, um, right before school starts. So we'll bring you in that night. We will actually give you your child's schedule and open the building up for you to figure out where you're going to go for the first block, the second block, the third block, and start familiarizing yourself with lockers and the cafeteria, where the gym is, and the band room, and all of those things. Tonight, the building is, is not open. So um, this is where we're going to be, and then out through the commons, and then, and then that's it. So we're not opening the building up for tours just yet. We don't want to overwhelm you too much. Uh, but that is something that we'll do in July. That's a big night. That's a very exciting night. Um, and so uh, we will, of course, when that is scheduled, also share it with you. When you have questions about courses and registration and requests and all those things, uh, your school counselor at your current school is the first place to go. The next place to go would be counselors here. There are some things that only these counselors can answer. And so there are their names, email addresses, and uh, the last names of the students they work with. And that phone number at the top is a direct line to the guidance office. So it's not one of those like you're going to call and hear a computer tell you to push a button to go to another line. That'll take you straight to the guidance office. 